Coach Yourself to Success. It's Shanda here. It's uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, I just got back to my office after traveling for two weeks. So you saw me kind of pop in and out of here from like Hawaii, San Jose, and things like that. But for the most part, we've had other people jumping in here, um, helping support the Coach Yourself to Success group. So first and foremost, welcome if you're brand new to Coach Yourself to Success. This is my give back to the world of entrepreneurism and helping you basically jump to the next level without investing in the high-end coaching fees. Not that I think anything's wrong with that. There is a great, um, a great, phrase that says you pay for speed so obviously if you if you uh, need to jump start your business quicker then you should reach out to us about actual private coaching but with that being said let me help you and coach yourself to success tweak your mind realign your focus so that you can create the business that I know that you started out to create when you pressed play on deciding to own your own company so um, you can, if you're new, you can always go back through the videos in this Facebook group and you can see um, some different trainings. If you look at the descriptions, you can see things like um, not too long ago, I did a training on how I uh, made my first million for you guys who it's important to you and you feel that calling to actually be a millionaire. Today, I want to talk about how it took me three years, three years of strong focus, focusing on the right thing to put myself in a position where I felt some peace of mind. I'm not saying that three years was horrible, the first three years, and I know that some of you guys are way past that, but if, you, if you've been in business for three years and you haven't had a real big breakthrough, like you're not financially really feeling peace of mind, you're not sitting there in a position where you know your messaging, know your marketing, know um, how to grow your company, actually have um, a sales staff, an admin staff, like divisions growing inside your company, then chances are you're focusing on the wrong thing. And I know that growing a business can often feel like a logic game. Like logically it makes sense if you put some cash into a website that your business that like is like your doors are open. I know that logically makes sense, but it's one of the dumbest things you can do unless you already have traffic. And I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm actually trying to create like an awareness here. It's like it's logic for us to focus on what is my, you know, what is my signature talk, right? It's like go book yourself on a stage, you'll figure out your signature talk. So it's like we get caught up in all of these moments of massive stalling and procrastination trying to grow our companies I'm gonna tell you it took me three years of focusing before I felt complete like financial peace peace of mind where I didn't wake up in the middle of the night freaking out about what I was doing inside my company if you're under that three-year mark then you know I'm gonna tell you that I don't know too many people who have been able to do it in a shorter amount of time there are people out there, but if you're in that three-year mark, just know, like, it's totally normal. Like, don't try and run away from, from the pressure. It's totally normal to feel that pressure. But after three years, you should feel some relief. And if you think about it, like, we send our kids to school, and we expect them to go through four years of college, and they're stressed out throughout the four years, and we feel bad for them. But then we're hoping that they're going to have some relief and like land a really great job and we know that that's not guaranteed and we know that entrepreneurship is not guaranteed but I can tell you that there are ways to um, basically litigate your risk there's ways to litigate your risk and I couldn't be more honest about this there's ways to litigate your risk that actually when you know them start to make a lot of sense so for instance I know it could sound it can be logic to start a website because, but that's all about you feeling credible and you think people are actually going to go Google you to find you to, and then you're going to get credi instant credibility. Well, first of all, if your website isn't copywritten and the messaging isn't on point and you haven't worked with enough people, then the truth is, is you actually are guessing what people want. And so starting with a website is one of, it sounds logic, but it's one of the biggest mistakes people make. Now let me flip to something else. Let me figure out the product I'm gonna sell. It's great if you already know your product, that's wonderful. You've probably worked with a number of people at this point and you know your product, that's great. But if, you're, if you've got nobody to sell it to, 
then you're still broke. So I would rather everybody focus on really like mastering. I even want to use the word dominating, which is weird for a woman to say, but like, like I want you to almost dominate and know 100% how to control your traffic. Because you see, if you have traffic coming in, all you have to manage your mind on is, is one thing, which is the fear of missing out, right? Like it's like you have all this traffic coming in, right? People are reading your blogs or people are watching your videos or I think we have almost 5,000 people in the Coach Yourself to Success group right now. Um, it's like I control my traffic. And so, like, the only thing I have to ever worry about when I don't have a place for you to go and buy something is, is just a fear of missing out, which we've all felt. I mean, uh, it's like, if it's like, uh, we felt it in high school when we had an exam to do and we had to sit down study for the exam and our friends are going out, we felt that fear of missing out. In other words, like, we can get through that feeling. But what we can't get through is the fact that we keep logicking ourselves into walls. We create products and services that we are inspired to create. We create websites and put more money into copy when we have no idea. We haven't actually gone back. Like every time I create a new product, before I ever put one, one ounce of my time, five minutes of my time into that product, I literally go and I ask my audience. I asked my email list, I asked my social media challenge, uh, channels, and I asked them, like, what, uh, what is it that you want around this topic? Like, what, like, I don't, I never, I have, like, things popping up on my screen here. I never create something out of my brain. And, in fact, when I started my company, I built an email list that was super targeted around the topic that I had no idea about which was spirituality and making money. I only had my experience with it and my small group of maybe 20 friends in my life that we somehow thought we knew it all. And I went and I started to try and find clients to match that product, and that didn't work. Now, it doesn't work at an eight-figure company either. I'm now an eight-figure company, and I still don't. Like, a few years ago, I, I, I made this mistake. I created um, an endurance program. And it's basically to, you know when you procrastinate and you can't figure out like how to find that next gear, you can't figure out like you know there's more inside you but you can't find it? Well, that is found in endurance. And it's like, and I'm, that's all I'm gonna say about that. But I was like, okay, I see the problem. I know how to fix it. I'm gonna just launch this product. And I did what most entrepreneurs should do, smart entrepreneurs should do, is I picked up the phone and did the sales myself, and I couldn't sell it. Even though I knew there was a problem, I knew that I could fix the problem, I couldn't sell it. And so what did I have to do? I had to go back to the audience, and I had to make the, I had to survey the audience in a very strategic way to find out what, how do they want to be sold to. So if you have a product right now that's not selling off the shelf, then I'm gonna tell you, that the chances are, if you know there's a pain point with it, but you can't figure out how to land it with people where, where they invest in it and you know you can help, then go back and survey. And if you don't have an audience, then you can't survey, right? Or if you're like too busy trying to grow social media cha uh, channels, which is great, but it's like, God, like we don't own, like I don't own you on social media. You're not an asset to me at any any point in time, Facebook can shut me down. Not only that, all of my competitors can actually find you by literally copying, like there's pixels online, there's, there's a lot of things that they can do to actually tap into the shared crop of you, okay? And so this is why if you don't already have a really successful business, I think it's a super logical move to follow the trend of social media I don't think it's a smart move until you actually have a really good email be, email list database. You know, if you look at, if you guys saw Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson, and Dean Graziosi's launch not too long ago, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it doesn't matter. You know who Tony Robbins is, I'm sure. Um, they delivered the entire thing, did over $30 million, I believe was the final count, really close to that, in one launch. And they, uh, they, did, they delivered all of that through email marketing and bringing people to a Facebook group. 
And when you look at like the most successful campaigns, they're always when things are simple. And what we tend to do is we follow the trends and we listen to what people are teaching online. I, I know how to Instagram market too. I know how to Facebook market too. I know how to fill it too. But the truth is that all of us work off our databases and even our paid traffic is worked off our databases. Meaning that like if you take if you take like whoever's opened your email in the last 90 days and you upload it to your social channels and you create lookalike audiences off of the off of the last 90 days of email open rates, then your ad cost goes significantly down. So I don't know about you, but the base of everything in my business is my email. And it's the smartest thing for you to put your attention in building. And if you don't do that and you get distracted, because there's only so much time in a day, I'm literally right now, I've got papers like all of it like I've got papers all over the place and this morning I've been crumpling them up and throwing them out which is hard right when you've got plans and notes I've been crumpling them all up and I've been throwing them out you know why because we're starting to spin again inside the company because we threw up too many balls in one place and I'm like stop everybody stop like stop let's refocus on one thing let's do it really well and that's what I'm trying to tell you when you're actually building a business if you haven't nailed really good email marketing, you should focus on building it, your email. You should focus on building an email list that's actually targeted buyers, not just a general email list. Um, then you should focus on learning how to actually do proper copy and email marketing. Then you should look at, like, how do I sell one product really well? I did that for, actually, to be quite honest, I, did, I sold one product really well for, it was about the fourth year that I started offering a second product. And still inside my company, it's like we've got our main program, Pace Private, that goes into Marketing Mastery, and then there's a 1% club. And that's been the base of my funnel, as you have it, for so many years. We're going into our ninth year now. And then the cool thing about that is when I decided that um, I wanted to open up a leadership training or an endurance training after I surveyed my list and found out how they wanted to be offered to, how they wanted to be spoken to, no different than in a marriage or a relationship. You need to know how does the other person, what's their love language? How do they want to be spoken to? We always forget this, right? Um, once I figured that out with leadership and endurance, then we sold out of leadership inside of like four or five months of that program starting. We're, we'll, be, we'll be sold out into 2020 in our leadership program probably, I bet, I'd probably bet by um, July or August, I'll be sold out into 2020. So that's like half a year in advance wait list to get into it, right? Um, I'm not offering endurance right now, but if I did, you know, I can tell you that I can sell out inside of a month and, you know, do a seven figure, you know, vertical inside of a month like that off my email marketing and off of focusing on one thing. I built one product, one community really well. And then all, all I do now is my community tells me where their pain points are. So yes, I survey. And my community, I survey my community as well. Um, last year and the year before, we had we had survey cards after every mastermind. Our clients actually told us like what did they like about that mastermind? What did they not like? What did they wish that they saw more of? And we surveyed them, right? And the what did you, what would you like to see more of determines what are other products and services, not what is Shanda inspired to teach, not what lights Shanda up. It's what lights me up is helping other people, right? Like, and I'm really clear and grounded about that now. Before I got clear and grounded about that, I thought my business was all about me. I thought it was about me living a good life, about me having financial freedom, about me making a difference in the world. Sure, I was willing to to give all of, you know, to fulfill on whatever people purchased from me, but it was still all about me. It wasn't until I realized that my business had nothing to do with me and that the thing I was chasing, the significance I was chasing and the fulfillment I was chasing was actually in getting feedback from my clients that they were winning. And so the more I can help, a whole tribe of entrepreneurs rise, the more I feel fulfilled. And so now, instead of me guessing or being inspired and creating something new all the time, all I do is continue the thing, same thing I was selling nine years ago. I continue to sell that one thing in the marketplace. And then when they're in the community, they tell me, because we've got such a, a 
I, like we, we have anywhere between 60 and 100 new high-end members join Hardcore every single month. Every single month. Right? Like, and so if you want a business like that, you really should come to the Zone event because I'm going to teach it. And we have severely discounted tickets right now for a short period of time. I don't have any info, info about that, but if you go to thezoneevent.com, let me just see if I can pop it in here. Thezoneevent.com, you can grab a ticket to there. But um, I just popped it in the comment section. But it's like, um, I digressed there for a second. That threw me off when I said that. But um, So I sold one thing really well. And then I got enough people in that program that the rest of my life is in serving them. See, I have no stress in selling my base level, you know, signature program, my flagship program, which is really like putting these platforms underneath you so you never have to ever wonder. Like, you want to buy a new house? Well, you know how to generate the cash flow. I could tell you uh, one of our clients, Crystal, wanted to buy a new house. She generated the money within a month, right, for her down payment, like out of nothing. You know, uh, debt, you need to pay off debt. You can generate the money. You want to know how to generate the money like that and not have it be stressful. You can imagine how unstressful growing this company has been. Seriously, how unstressful it's really been with the fact that I've sold one thing for nine years. Not only do I know how to do it, I have everything built to do it, and everybody's clear about it, and I have traction in the marketplace after all these years. Um, then I spend the rest of my life serving this big, amazing membership community I have membership community and they tell me what it is that they need. I mean, we're so tight and close. They're, they give me honest feedback about this is what I need or this is what I need. And then all I have to do at that point is go create products and services on a, on a scaling basis. So I don't launch too many of them in one year. I might launch one for two years before I ever launch another one. Right. And I, and, and anytime I'm not going to launch, it's called a vertical, like a division inside the company. So like when I launched leadership, um, this is the second year of leadership and now um, it's well, it's, it, it's well, uh, like it's lifted, you know, like it's a plate lifted. I have like, it, there's, it doesn't take any of my time. It takes a lot of my money to run it, but it doesn't take a lot of my time to run it. Um, my husband runs it and there's like, it's just, it's a completely run company. And so in its own, but so now I have a speakers division that we've opened. Well, in the process before I, when my clients were telling me they needed, they needed uh, speaking training and storytelling and messaging training, I found a, my, a really good friend that I knew was super successful and I asked him to discount his, his prices and I promoted them to our clients and my clients know this. I took zero money from that. So for two years, I didn't have a speaker's division when my clients needed it because they were telling me they needed it. And I took no money from this. We built all of our models and generosity models. I wasn't, I wasn't in it to make money. I was in it to take care of them. So I brought somebody else in. I negotiated a discounted rate, just like I do for hotel rooms at the Zone event. I negotiated a discounted rate. I took zero money from that, no affiliate commissions, no referral fees, and I had them pass those savings on to our clients. And then once I got leadership up, then I went, okay, who's the person that I invest in and can I create a deal with that person, which was Chris Smith, which you've seen him streaming in here before. Um, he's the only man streaming in here. And he teaches you around storytelling and speaking and all that type of stuff. I, I, I did a, a merger acquisition with Chris and we merged Chris's company into Hardcore. Now we have a speakers division, again, 100% leverage. I do not teach it. I'm not trying to be the all and be all. I'm not trying to drive myself into the ground, right? But I am trying to continue to grow the company by servicing the existing group of people that I have been enrolling for nine years of my life. So I just ho I hope, that, is this making sense to you guys? Like, is this like an aha? Like, is there anything standing out to you? Is it like, is it helping you with a little bit of relief and like, like not chasing after so many things to grow and build and also help you manage boredom? Like when you get bored, I have another great friend of mine, also uh, an Inc. Uh, 500 company, 
and she's bored in our coaching company. She's completely bored. She made it to $6 million a year, completely bored. And now she's like talking about buying like a restaurant and she's still coaching. You would never know this is happening in the world right now. You still think she's completely committed to coaching, but behind closed doors, she's not, she's not really excited about it. And like, and I'm sitting there going, walk through the boredom, walk through the boredom because entrepreneurship has nothing to do with you. Walk through the boredom. Right. And, and you'll find that next, um, it's almost like getting a second wind in your business, right? You'll get a second wind in your business where, where it becomes all about them, all about the people you're serving versus all about you creating something new. So I'd like to hear from you guys. Um, is this resonating with you is like, what's standing out to you? I would like to, I would like to know what's standing out, what's landing for you so that I can see who's in this group. You know, um, I'd love to know if you're willing to share, like, what is your annual income so that I know, you know, who's in this group. Um, if you don't feel comfortable about doing that, you can always, always private message uh, me, Mariana's on my private message, helping me manage some of our inflow of coaching and support. Um, but it's good for me to know, like, what your income, what your income level was last year, what you think it's going to be this year, um, what's really landing for you, because that tells me, that's like a survey, that tells me, like, okay, who's in this group? And I want to desperately take care of you. <laughs> I want to help you. Like, I'm, uh, I really am the same way behind closed doors. I had a woman that I just led an event in San Jose, um, and it's one of our PACE private clients, and she said, I came to this event because literally I was curious. Like, you're the same person in, in person as you are inside the training, like inside of leading our trainings. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm the same person when I turn off all the videos and I'm working with my friends or I'm being a mom or I'm being a wife. I like, I truly do have a huge desire to make a difference. And it's not just a conscious slogan that I say. Um, it's through generosity and giving that I have found the gateway to an extraordinary life. And I want to give all that to you at the zone event. Um, I want you to come to the zone event. That's why I'm so obsessed with saying book a ticket and come to the zone event and I want to help entrepreneurs really figure out navigate this landscape there's nothing worse than spinning your wheels and feeling like why am I not getting traction or why am I back in this place again where I feel uninspired about what I'm doing I'm telling you I have felt that way so many times and been able to generate that next second breath that next second win to be able to go the long haul so here's to you absolutely managing your mind, staying in the step you're in, focusing on the right things so that you can work normal hours in your business, normal hours in your life, and you can have a life. If you're brand new to Coach Yourself to Success, currently for the last four years, I've been taking off five months out of the year. It's not five months consecutive, but it's not that, I, that I'll never be able to do that, it's just haven't wanted to. And so, but when you add up all of my days off, my vacation time, my flex time, which is the last, I take the last week of every month off, it works out to be five and a half months. I've been doing that for four years now. And the company 4X this year. So, sorry, it's a big truck. Um, which is, I think, an accomplishment. It's not only, a, I, I think there's one thing to make money, it's another thing to have an extraordinary life, an extraordinary marriage, not feel guilty. I've, I've felt guilty in moments raising my son, but it's like for a day and I change things. You know what I mean? So there's obviously a way that I lead my thoughts and lead my strategy that's allowed me to build what I built. 4X this year. I know it's only halfway through the year, not even quite halfway through the year, but I know our trajectory because it's consistent. My cash flow is consistent. My lead gen is consistent. My conversions are consistent. In fact, they keep getting better. Um, you know, the company uh, leadership internally is consistent. We send all of our staff members, all of our team members through our leadership training um, as well. Like, we're just consistent. And I want to make sure that that map goes over your business and over the years of your life that are coming forward. You have these years that are coming forward right now. And I want to put a good consistent map of that. So please, if you enjoy what it is that I'm talking about, you can come every day at 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, and I'm either here or Chris is here, or um, usually it's me, or it's our head of coaching or our VP of sales. We're just pouring into this group to make a difference. But without a doubt, get a ticket to the Zone Vet. Um, it's like $400, like $400 less um, this year 
Uh, we're trying to help as many people as we can. So grab a ticket to the zone event, come grab a friend, come with a friend. I don't believe in one person winning and, and somebody else not winning. I always bring a friend with me everywhere I go to succeed. Study with a friend, share a room with a friend, come with a friend, come to the zone event. All right, that's a wrap today. Tell me what landed for you. Grab your ticket to the zone. Link is in uh, the comment section. All right, you guys, I'll see you at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Hope this was super valuable and worth your time.